Oh, yay. Awesome. I was just texting Sarah. I was like, I can't find Shelly. <laughs> oh, I can't God. hear you though. Oh, let me make sure. Let's see. Am I muted? This happened last time. I can't hear you. Hold on. Let's try it this way. I think I need to change. It says your mic is working. I can see your little like thing going up and down. Yeah. Um, oh, you know what? I think it's because I have my stuff plugged in for recording videos. Hold on. Let me unplug some stuff. There we go. Yeah. Awesome. Great. Yeah, I decided not to do the Facebook Live because I've been reading on all these forums that Facebook Live isn't working for like anyone. So. Oh, yeah. So this is definitely, definitely a better way to go with this one. Yeah, for sure. So no more tech glitches. And I can see people are joining us. Amanda and Jackie and Marla and Michelle. I'll give a people a second to hop on because I just posted the link in the Facebook group. So we'll see. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. It was uh, such an awesome day today. I got to uh, just do some cooking for my mom so she doesn't really have to worry about like food or anything. So it was just like a really nice little surprise for her. So she'll, she'll get awesome. to enjoy that later. <laughs> That's awesome. You're such a good daughter. <laughs> I love her so much. Oh my goodness. How was today for you? Oh, it was so good. It was really productive. The last few days have been like those yesterday I worked from like nine to nine. Never when that happens, um it feels good, you know. I don't do it a lot anymore, but I'm like, yeah, crazy. <laughs> uh, and then today was another really productive day, but yeah, so it's good. Yeah, that's awesome. It feels really good, like at the end of the day when you just, ah, check, 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 check. Like I have a little, um, two different books, but one that has all of my little things that I'm supposed to do and I just, I'm super productive. I'm checking it. All. Sometimes oh, I put good. like shower on there and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like put like brush your teeth. Like, yeah. <laughs> cross, cross it off. Like I already did it, but I'll like write it down. Cross it off. <laughs> Me too. Shower, <laughs> eat, breakfast, those types of things. Yeah, like, sometimes you gotta I, yourself. Because I tell myself, I'm like, well, if it's not on my calendar, it's not real. So right, that's right. I know you should. I literally live by my calendar. If my like Google Calendar just like disappeared one day, I would like not know what to do. <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'll still give people a second to talk. Pop in. I want to check the Facebook group, make sure people aren't like asking questions. So let me hop over there. Um, but we can also just get rolling because a lot of people just like to catch the replay. So that's good. Um, trying to see speaker view, gallery view. What do we want? I say speaker view. Okay. Um, so I think instead of jumping right into questions, why don't we just like, you know, you tell a little bit of your story. I think most people have probably seen your um, testimonial video. So if there's anything you want to like emphasize on that, but also anything that you'd like to add to it and I don't know, just give us a little intro. Sure. I think there's something that's really important that it's the premise for everything. It's, it's the answer to all the questions. Yeah. It's the how it works. It's the why it works. It's the what do I do? It's like, what shouldn't I do? And really, there's, there's three rules, three non-negotiable rules that I live by in business and in life and in everything. Because my personal motto is how I do anything is how I do everything. So how I show up in one way is how I'm showing up in all other aspects of my life. And so these three rules are... Number one, of course, no excuses. So mm -hmm. these are things I tell myself every day and I'm not willing to hear it from myself. Like the excuses, that to me is time wasted. The, the time that I spend making excuses is time that I could spend building my business. So when I say I don't have time and I don't have, I can't afford it or it's this or it's that, that is energy that I could redirect into creating the time into building my business. So no excuses is rule number one. 
And rule number two is no victims, no victim mentality. I don't want to hear it from myself. I really don't. I don't have time to hear it from myself. I really don't. There are people who have it 10 times worse than me. There, we look at human history. People have been able to do extraordinary things with little to no resources, with back against the wall, with all adversaries. So like, what's my excuse? You know? So true. And so I, I, I remind myself that every day, rule number two, no victim. So whenever I kind of catch myself like slipping into this victim mentality, I look for ways to be able to empower myself out of that or to do some sort of self-care to really kind of soothe that because I understand that that's wasting energy. It's not helpful. And rule number three for myself is that mindset is everything. Whenever I think that I've got mindset down, like, no, that's all the reason why I need to keep working with mindset. And if, I mean, your, your thoughts create your feelings and your feelings create your actions and your actions create your results. And then those results create more thoughts. So it's like this cycle. If I don't have the results that I want in my life and something is not clicking in the way that I really want it to, it's not so much about what I'm doing or what I'm not doing or the how and the what as much as it is about how I'm thinking. I need to change the way that I think more so than I need to be like worried so much about what I'm doing. So I spend a minimum of two hours per day on mindset morning and night. I can't afford not to. So those are like my three non-negotiable rules, no excuses, no victims, and mindset is everything. It's beyond mindset is key. <laughs> it's mindset no, is everything. It's so true. And it's funny because somebody recently in the group asked me, what copywriting like workshops and uh, masterminds do you go to? And I was like, all the masterminds I go to and workshops are about mindset. <laughs> because like, it's, I'm not saying that copywriting is not important to go to workshops and stuff, but for me, like the mindset stuff is what has been the game changer. And yes. I also spend like an hour to two hours every morning on mindset stuff. And I'm so excited because I'm rewriting my 2020 morning routine and it's so fun and exciting. And I know it'll be like re-energizing to like spend new time on that, but it's so true. And it's some, one of those things that like you hear people talking about, but you're like, what is mindset and how do you implement it? And like, what does that look like? And so I'd love to hear from you actually, what do you do for like, what does that look like for you? Your mind. Yeah, I think I might have a copy of it right here because it's got to be like accessible. I have it um, written down in here in my little planner. It's got my little like routine on it. So I'll read it to you guys. Um, but the first thing that I do is I start my day with some sort of like gratitude journaling and I keep I might have it yeah I do gotta have it accessible I actually have like four different gratitude journals and I use them all so this one is it just allows me to write just a quick three things that I'm grateful for just to get something going then I have this other journal which has a little <laughs> sun on it it's so cute um, this is where I expand on those gratitudes and I'll just go on for about a page it'll be like one thing like oh I just love my mom she's so great blah, blah, blah. just like go on about that and really get that vibration going. So I do my gratitude journaling first. Then I do a uh, visualization meditation where I have to practice really seeing my life exactly how I want it and rehearse it in my head until it just becomes so natural. And I do it on a free meditation app called Insight Timer. You could just look up like meditation. I do like a cool little visualization meditation. It takes like eight minutes. No biggie. Then I do a mindfulness meditation, which is, you know, just like slightly different. I use a head, the Headspace app and just to kind of make sure that I quiet my mind and can have the right headspace to be able to make all the decisions that I want to make that day. Then I do yoga as well. Um, I do yoga with Adrienne. You guys might know her free on YouTube, you know, and she <laughs> has a 30 day yoga thing every day. So she sends emails to me about what yoga I'm supposed to do every day. <laughs> and I just do it. And uh, then I listen to some sort of like motivational type of like video I'll just listen to that in the background and you know that's essentially like my my morning routine to really get it going that's awesome oh that's so good I'm so glad to hear you say that I remember when we first spoke I was like dang I need to get back into my, like my mindset work 
<laughs> like it was just so inspiring to hear you talk about how much of an impact that's had in your life and in your business. And I was like, oh yeah, it's so good. It's yeah. good to hear other people fired up about it. Cause that's the other thing. I don't know if you've had the experience, but most people in the world aren't working on these things. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um, I think entrepreneurs tend to more so than others because they're, you know, they got to wake up every day and decide what to do with their day. Um, and a lot of entrepreneurs are talking about it, but yeah, so I don't know, like my, a lot of my friends who are working like nothing wrong with this, but like in their nine to five and not really like entrepreneurs or have any other reason for doing mindset stuff. When they hear about my morning routine, they're like, what? (laughs) (laughs) yeah Yeah. and it could sound like kind of extensive but it really works and I think the last little thing I forgot is I use this little daily planner that I have for myself every day but I just like you know map out my little stuff every day and so basically I take the time to answer a few questions where I say okay how do I want to feel today and I set that intention then I choose a focus what exactly and specifically is today's focus and I write that out then I decide what are the three most important tasks that absolutely have to get done today for this to be like a like an A plus day and I write those three tasks then I choose six other tasks or up to six that are not as important as the top three tasks but are important for me to be able to move my goals forward and I write those down and then I have my little self-care section you know yoga meditation gratitude like what are the things that need to keep this going so I can so I can do all that and I'll just take about like oh like 20 minutes in addition to my routine and just like make sure that all that is set up because it cuts down on me needing to make decisions throughout the day because making decisions is very exciting exhausting on your mental power because it lets you procrastinate you're like oh should I do this or should I do this I guess I'll do nothing but if it's already like written out you can just boom 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 go so I just make sure that I do that as well with my routine and just oh it just really helps so much so so much yeah and that's another thing that you just that you mentioned that has really had an impact on my like productivity in general is I always plan my next day the night before Mm -hmm. So like when I'm done wrapping up for the day, I always end with, okay, what is tomorrow going to look like? And I like plan out my priority list work-wise, you know, what I'm going to do as far as like working out, you know, meditation, if I'm going to go like, and I plan out my whole day. And then I don't ever have a morning where I'm like waking up, not sure what to do or what I should work on. It's like very clear. I can like jump up and get right to it. So, well, awesome. That's, I just love hearing that. (laughs) So do you want to jump into some of the questions? Um, You have them in front of you. So we can just kind of start from the top. If you don't mind sharing, do you mind sharing your timeline of income each month? Sure. Yeah, this was this one was really fun. So I came in to write Actually, real quick. I just want to tell everybody who's watching. There is a chat that you can type questions into and add to the questions as we go. So I wanted to make sure that they knew that. So sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, guys, feel free to add any questions that you might have. Like now is the time, right? You know, yeah. Power of now. Uh, so yeah, my my monthly uh, timeline of income. So I came in to write your way to freedom in May of 2019, I think, and was just like, all right, let's hit it. So the first month, it was just shy of $1,000, so probably about $950, and that was like um, – that was like a website for like $700 for like a digital marketer and an about me page for like Facebook that he was going to like repurpose on other platforms. So it was about 700, 700 plus like 250. So about 950 that first month. And then the second month. So meanwhile, my mindset through this is like, how can I double? How can I double? You know, so that's the target and wherever I hit in between that is going to be just fine. So the next month uh, was like a website um like website copy for about a thousand dollars and it was another kind of like about page for a solopreneur uh for about two hundred dollars uh so you know now we're coming up on about like that twelve hundred dollar mark then i like month three things started really kind of like all right feeling my groove here so i did another website client for about a thousand dollars and then i did an interesting thing with like a social media kind of stuff at first i was like i don't really know but i figured out how to work that out on a retainer that would really 
make sense for me. So the the website ended up being about like a thousand dollars, and then the uh, social media retainer thing became like a thousand dollars. So now I kind of hit that like two thousand dollar mark. Uh, then the person with the social media, we were getting more clients from referrals and that way they're like, okay, I like the work you're doing. Now can we do some more? So their social media, you know, we're on like, um, I think month four at this point, their social media demand became a little bit higher. So that became like $1,500 per month. And then uh, I'm doing like two website clients at about a thousand for that project. And now I'm starting to introduce uh, emails. So that these website clients have got this great website, but now they're like, we need to do something with it and it needs to make us money. So now they're trying to launch different things as well. Uh, they started launching like little products. So now we've got some like product descriptions up in there. And then there's like an email funnel that is contributing to like the launch of this product. So I'm doing like uh, product descriptions, you know, like three at like 150. Uh, we're doing email funnels uh, at about a uh, hundred to 150 per email and there's like eight emails in there and that email funnel we're doing the social media at about a hundred uh, excuse me 1500 per month and we're doing the website two websites at about um a thousand per website so now that's where i started to really creep up to that four thousand five thousand dollar per month about forty five hundred dollars per month on month four and so now i'm just like kind of upping this right i'm getting now like so we're looking at month like five i've got uh multiple email funnels now so like one email funnel like you know if i'm doing like 100 150 per email is like 1200 dollars for like one email funnel so now i have like two of those going on uh and then we have the social media client who's doing like um about 1500 per month on retainer then we've got two and like a half website because like some websites are just smaller they just don't really need that much so it's like uh, we're looking at like two thousand dollars for like the full people and then like uh, about a thousand dollars for the like kind of half person kind of website so that's taking me around that like five thousand six thousand dollar kind of mark and then i really jumped up to this eight thousand dollar mark where i was just like man emails are my jam loving this i can crank these out like really fast i love i love sales i love marketing like this is fun so i'm doing like several of those email funnels i think it was probably like uh probably about like four four to five different types of email funnels um and that's at like about twelve hundred dollars um i've got like a couple of website clients and they're really like paired with these email uh funnels and then i'm doing some facebook ads now at about 200 to 300 dollars per Facebook ad, but I also have like kind of a little interesting deal with people with Facebook ads. It just depends on what they're selling, but if they're doing like an online program, um, I love sales, you guys. So I'm like always trying to close a deal. So they will at times give me like percentages of whatever the conversion, like the people actually buying the product is so it's like okay I've, they've paid me 200 or 300 dollars to do this facebook ad but if they are running it for like this like 500 dollar product or let's just say a thousand dollar product right and like x amount of people buy it they'll give me like 10 percent of whatever that was so i kind of like to work those deals out as well because i'm very like focused on the direct response and it really helps them to you know, increase their conversion. So like, in a nutshell, that's, that's my monthly, like breakdown of how I got from that, like, <laughs> just shy of a 1000 to now like about $8,300 per month. Now, keep in mind, my mom does all the bookkeeping. So I wish she was on this live to like get in there more, but I try to like, keep it up there as much as I can. <laughs> Wait, that is hilarious. Usually like comes over to like tell people, wow, let me do the month to month breakdown. <laughs> I was like, um, mom, can you let them know what's going on on, on the books? <laughs> I got into copywriting because I don't right? like math, but I like I, the money. I, I love that so much about your story. I can't even tell you. <laughs> Somebody just asked, uh, how'd you find your first few, few clients? Yeah, my first few clients, I remember going in Sarah's course and you guys know the module, um, but it's the one where she tells you about how to get your clients. And I remember 
she said, you know, it's not in any particular order, but these are just some great ways. And I saw that first bullet point that said something along the lines of like, look in your like immediate circle, friends, family, or network or whatever. And I'm like, oh, that clicks to me. That makes sense. Now, keep in mind, you guys, I'm really introverted. Like, I don't be out and about. Like, I'd be at the crib. That's why I wanted to do copywriting so I could be at home. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't have this, like, really extensive uh, social butterfly kind of network. I just really thought about, okay, how can I ask an empowering question? What resources do I have? So I just started thinking about, okay, what types of Facebook groups um, am I already a part of where it's really easy to showcase like what what I do and how I write. So I was in some other online courses that I had already bought in the past and I would just not even trying to be like salesy or anything but really more so just trying to practice copywriting. Um, I'm doing like I post up in the group, just something insightful and valuable to this type of group and writing it in a way that a copywriter would write it with the intention to close. My my mind is like always be closing. Like I'm either closing somebody on an idea or myself or themselves or a product or service or whatever, but you're always influencing people. You're either selling or you're being sold. Like those are the only two options. So like getting that kind of like whatever mindset you have about sales, like we're in the business, this is marketing. Like you got to be willing to like not have resistance about like selling people or closing people. So I'm posting up these different things in groups and people are just like, oh man, you write really well. Like, this is really cool. <laughs> and then, you know, the, and then they start asking, they're like, so you look like you're good at writing. I'm not good at writing. So can you write for me? <laughs> and that would be how it, how it like started. And that's actually how I got my very first client was. Is that a post? So was that specifically a Facebook post? Yeah, yeah. I used to just like, um, sometimes I would make these like videos and then I would put like some really catchy copy with it. And they would just be like, wow, this is written really well because it compelled me to actually like stop and watch this video. So I closed them on the idea of like watching this video, cutting through all of this noise that they have uh, different right. videos that they can watch on Facebook. Would you be willing to share one of those with us like later on in the group or something? You can pick that. You don't have to answer right now, but if you have like a post or something that like did really well, just to like give people another idea. Because that's something yeah. I, like I know works really well and I've done it too. But um, yeah, it's just not, it's not something we've had a lot of examples of in the group. So I think if you are willing to share, it would be cool to like see what you did. Sure. Yeah. I'll see if I can get like permission and like figure out how I can get that. And, and even uh, I can even create some new ones too. If for some reason I'm not able to get access, I'm, I'm always doing it like everywhere. So I'm definitely going to just figure out how I can get like a really cool example of that. Cause it just like, it works. It's, it comes back once again to like how you do anything is how you do everything. If I'm a copywriter need to be like putting on the cake, got to really own the title and, and really feel that because when you know that, well then other people will know too. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, but, for sure. And that's why like when people are posting, you know, just their piece, their first pieces, I know they're nervous and everything like within the group asking for editing and stuff. I'm like, you gotta, that's your chance to practice copyright. And I'll be like, please edit my stuff. Like, I forget somebody wrote this thing about how it was like right around the holidays and they were like three reasons to uh, like edit my piece. And one of them was like, you'll get on San Santa's nice list. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm editing this. And I like, <laughs> I was like, that's good. Like, that's it. If you take the time to like, it seems like, like so small and insignificant, but like, that's a chance to practice. And when you just mm -hmm. start doing it all the time, it like, it comes more naturally. And it's fun. Like, you just have fun with it. Yeah. So I know that um, in your testimonial, you talked about how um, website copy has been kind of your jam, too. And um, what, like, kind of group, because I remember, I think you said something along the lines of, like, you went after people who you knew would need website copy. Who were those people and how did you connect with them? Like, specifically website copy people. Yeah. So... This, I think, really originates to mindset as well, where I really focus on the who of 
the of, of, of anything when it comes to like building client relationships or having clients or anything it's it's less about like how can I like get them to buy something from me and more like who do I really resonate with and love and care about as a person and really am interested in working with as a person and know that as a result they would really be interested in me as a person too and we would work together so a really great um example with like a website copies you know so for example i'm thinking uh, like oh my goodness my i think my my big fish client is a really great example of this because uh, now i have like this huge huge client where i really don't have to halfway search for clients anymore because this relationship is just that profitable she's got all the clients and we're just it, it all makes sense it really started with i like her work as a person and I knew who she I, I knew about who she was as a person I know that like okay if I'm doing like website copy it's going to make sense to be with someone who's like a designer or who does right. websites for other people or or things like that so I'm I really love the type of design that she would do so I would just support her and right. you know it costs zero dollars to like somebody's thing on Facebook you know so I'm uh, interacting with her being a part of her free group, being a part of her, of her community. She's getting to know me. I'm participating on her like weekly mm. Instagram lives. I enjoy, you know, her as a person. And then when it came time to, cause I could see that she was definitely going places with her business. She was definitely scaling. And when she was looking for people to work with, boom, here I am. So when it, the same is really the case with all the different types of people that I'm looking for in terms of clients. I like, I really think about who is the type of person that would really need web copy. And then I need to know very intimately who, who they are. So like really what keeps them awake at night? What are they procrastinating about? What do they waste time on? What's their ultimate life dream? What do they want more than anything? What's keeping them from having this and, and really why, you know, why haven't they been able to reach their goals? What did they try? What didn't work? Who are their friends? Who are their competitors? Who are their enemies? What challenges are they facing in their industry now and in the future? And, you know, do they, even small things like this, are they married with kids? Do they want kids? No, because if they want kids, well, I need to hang out in mom groups. If they don't want kids, then those like digital nomad kind of groups right. like traveling and stuff, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> Think very intimately about who they are as a person and then what they're interested in. And those are the types of groups that I join and not with the intention of like, I'm trying to fish out clients in that way. It's more so like, who are the types of people I can connect with? Because most high quality Facebook groups are not going to let you go in and self-promote. They'll ban you if you're right. trying to, right. you know, attack people with your stuff. That's so annoying. <laughs> mm -hmm. <Yeah>. Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. So I really focus on how can I then find the right types of people to build a relationship with. And then I really focus on like kind of big fish clients where if I build this relationship is going to lead to a bunch of other relationships and I build my book of business, what that's called. So when I have like these big people who are really in there, then I can start calling upon them who I already have this business relationship with to say, Hey, like I have capacity for this. What can we do? And they're like, great, that's perfect because I need help with A, B and C and like nobody was doing this. So that's, that's like that very natural, right. Um, who focus relationship uh yeah no that's been my experience too especially like if you kind of like climb the ladder and then once you get that one name especially within your niche like that's it because you can yeah. all be like i wrote for this person and then everybody in that niche is like oh you did huh and <laughs> that's it but you you work your way up there and then you when you get that name it makes everything just so easy so it's about like getting up there but um Jumping real quick back to the video you posted in your Facebook, somebody submitted a question and I wanted to make sure we didn't get too far along before we addressed it. So they said they want a little clarification. Did you just make a video of yourself talking that you posted and then you wrote about it? Like, I think they just wanted a little more clarification on that. 
Yeah, so almost because of like the nature of the group, right? Like we're in in this group, we were doing a lot of um, mindset work and also like sales and stuff too, like learning to to do sales. And so I was actually one of the first people, first people who just took it upon myself to make a video. So I was just ex- like telling them a story, uh, just about something that I was doing. I believe my very first video that I made was just about, hey, like I'm I'm on the phone with this client to like try and like close them and this is how the close went. And so I'm telling them the story about what the close was in the video, but in the copy that was happening, I was really telling them about why it was relevant for them to like want to know more about how this close took place. So it's like, for example, if you, you know, if you are like struggling to like close an influencer or to like close this kind of sale and you've done like A, B, and C and like that didn't work and now you're frustrated, like check this out. So it was kind of like that. That's awesome. (laughs) I love that. I love that. It's funny that you say you're an introvert because you don't seem like... I don't know, man. It took me so long to put myself on video, but it's good. It's good to be able to do that. So, um, yeah. your so the the next question you kind of already answered, but let's just say it out loud um, and see if there's any gaps you maybe want to fill in because it says how does your monthly in- income break down, um, which you really went into detail on that. But do do you mostly write web copy? Um, and if you if so, are you needing to cold email? as often to land clients? Yeah, so what, at first it was more web copy. Now it's more of emails because emails are, I guess you could say like more consistent than web copy. Because once they get to experience what it's like, they didn't know what they were doing with their email list in the first place. Now they're like, oh, well, I actually want to keep doing this and I want to launch this. And now we can do some emails to that. So I would say it's a little, it's a, it's like website copy, um, uh, social media and emails that really drive the most and, and Facebook ads as well. Those are like, oh, I love those. Yeah. Yeah. I love email too. Kind of what you said as far as like, it's, I don't know, it's just fun. Yeah. You get numbers, which I love. Mm -hmm. I love some numbers. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Exactly. Not necessarily on, I mean, well, emails are more ongoing, but website content is one of those things where it's like, it's done. One and done. Mm -hmm. But it's a good relationship builder. So if they do with their website, then it's like, you know, more likely that they'll have other projects that they want to give you. Exactly. The next question is, how do you go about building a real relationship with potential clients or just people in your niche um, in general without coming across as salesy? Yeah. answer these questions myself. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, this is, I I love this question because it's just, there's so much here. And I think my shirt kind of answers part of this question as well. This wasn't intentional, but now that I'm, I'm thinking about it, it totally makes sense. Uh, so we're talking about, you know, how do you build like a really real relationship? So I, I have a client who she's like a health coach and outside of what she does in her health coaching business, she's a dancer that has nothing to do with me as far as copywriting goes but like I said earlier I really care about who the person is as a client and I know them on a very very intimate level and she is like one of my favorite clients to work with she's one of my OG clients we have like this very long-term relationship now she refers a lot of people she was the type of client who said to me like when I was in my early days I was like oh honey I want to give you a discount she said I don't want a discount you're already paid full price. What do you mean? Like, so yeah. she's like that kind of ideal client. And I, I, I have this shirt from her like little nutcracker Christmas ballet thing. And I wear it because like, I, I like it. I went to the show. I enjoyed it. Like it was really, really fun. And, you know, I just, I really care about it. It's, it's like, there's no manual on how to actually genuinely care about people, but like actually genuinely caring about people is, is like the essence and the foundation of building that relationship. So I say, I would say that's like the first pillar. It doesn't mean you have to go over the moon and beyond, but you just genuinely have to care about that person and, and those types of people. So don't, don't try and like work with tons of clients who you feel like that would be a very upstream battle for you. Try to try to see if there's if there's a great place where you can actually really enjoy those types of people that you'd be working with. And the second pillar 
I would say is you, you kind of got to let go of some of that resistance about sales. We're in the business of copywriting. The whole, the, like the whole point really of, of copywriting is to get people to take action, right? Like our, clients aren't necessarily just hiring us because they like our writing or they like think it's it's great to look at they want customers to like buy things from them and so we have to kind of like let go a little bit of that resistance that we have around sales because once again you're either selling or you're being sold to like pick so I like to just kind of take a deep breath and let that go and then realize that I'm always selling you're like when you were younger and and if you have kids you're you're selling your kids on eating vegetables and not eating candy cereal 24 7 you're selling them on that so you, you know you're you're always kind of in that type of dynamic where you're you're influencing in that way so the, now the, the, the Sorry. Mm -hmm. go ahead. no go ahead Oh, to, to, and to not come across as salesy is just like, I think of like, what are the, t the, the slick back jack, like sales tactics, like, oh yeah. And then, and, and wait, you get this ultimate free thing. Like, you know, the weird sales lines, like don't sound like that type of like sleazy used car salesman type of person really focus on being able to connect with that person and understand what their problems are and how you can actually get them connected with the best solution and usually i mean from from the for the most part you want to be that person who's that best solution and you're really helping them to understand how this can make their life easier and how you can take away those pain points that are keeping them up at night and that they're procrastinating on that's making in their business like totally drag when you see it as instead of like selling them and you're more of like solving their problem now it's like ooh, this is you know this is this is fun you know this is fun for them because they're 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 getting a burden completely relieved off of them and you know you're the one who's able to facilitate that so I really try to like I said just care about people and let go of some of that resistance about sales and make it really really focus on solving problems and just figure out how you can really support them and how you can really help them even in small ways like even if it's just like wearing a shirt that's really you know supportive of them and then you know she, she's also talking about um, that that comes into like building your book of business as well if you want a long-term relationship with them I think it really helps to decide what's the candor what's the tone of your types of client relationships in business are you very professional and very polished or corporate are you more personal do you are you like kind of an agency what does that tone really sound like because that's going to come into the art of the follow-up that I call which is like maybe they didn't buy from you now but you want them to become a client later and you you know have your checkpoints I have like a little client calendar where I put all of the important stuff for them like oh maybe they have an event that's coming up in their business that's important in this way and I should send a follow-up email to them at that day and that time or it's like their birthday or you know they, they just got married they just had a baby and now we need to check in kind of like about that so I kind of have like little things scheduled for my client account I'll just follow up with them periodically at different quarters of the year and just let them know hey you know I actually really care about you as a person and they're more likely likely to say, oh, that, that is the type of person I want to work with. So that really helps yeah, me. No, it's so good to hear you say that because first of all, I love that you're wearing a, a nutcracker shirt. That is crazy. <laughs> 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 and it's so true. And it's why I harp on it all the time about like how I want everyone to work for people they really believe in because two things happen. You love working with them and you like, my clients are my friend, like friends. Yeah. Like, you know, some of them are not even just like kind of friends. They're like, I would call them if like bad shit went down. And I was like, yeah. oh. like, and to be able to call your clients in like a situation like that. I mean, that's just all because of relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, uh, it's just everything. But then the other thing is, is when you're doing that, you are less resistant to the sales part of the process because you're working for people you believe in. And when you believe in them and you know that they're awesome and they're amazing and they're helping people and they're doing things that like you, you like, you want to like shout about it. You're like, Oh my gosh. And then like copywriting is easy. Cause you're like, <laughs> is the best thing, you know? And yeah, it's so, uh, I just, I love the Nutcracker shirt. 
so good. <laughs> oh man. So yeah, it's true. Building a relationship. And that's another thing. I think there is a mindset shift that kind of happens. Well, it happened for me when I first became like, I was like, okay, I'm not an employee. I need to stop acting like an employee. I stopped making all of my calls with like long-term clients, like strictly business, yeah. you know? And I started being like, Hey, how's your life? Oh, like, you know, you guys are about to have a baby and I would like send them a baby blanket and like a little card, you know what I mean? And when I stopped making everything like strict, like you don't want to like make it uncomfortably personal, especially at first, but you also don't need to like be a robot. Like you can get to, you get to be yourself more and it's just more fun. And yeah, relationships like that just go so far and make life so much more enjoyable and work so much more fun. Ugh. So yeah, I love to hear you, hear you talk about that. We should talk about that more in our group. <laughs> yeah. But um, so next, I'm just gonna jump right into the next question, which is how many writing pieces do you complete a week, and are your clients consistent ones? Yeah, I would say my clients are, are definitely very consistent right now. At first, it wasn't like that because I was doing website copy predominantly, which is kind of like one and done. But now I do a lot of emails and uh, Facebook ads and special Facebook ads with the retargeting. That means like one client could need like, you know, several different pieces. And with emails, like one email funnel on average for me is like eight pieces of emails plus whatever other stuff that they need, which is like abandoned card and like all that other stuff. So now they're pretty uh, consistent. So I would say I work on at least like one to two per day, like usually about two per day. Um, and if I take a break, it's like one to two, like every other day, but usually about, about two, I'm, I'm writing every day. Like, I don't really think uh, there's like a day that like I don't write you know I take I'll have like a kind of like a day off or whatever I'm just like okay you know maybe like one or two days where I don't but I'm for the most part writing at least one to two pieces like every day yeah yeah and that was my experience too it was like one to two a day to like make that eight you know eight thousand mm -hmm. but that wasn't like necessarily I don't know about you how many hours is that because I I couldn't write for eight hours like <laughs> I was like really like ah oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely it's it's a lot less than when I used to work at my job. So sometimes it is about uh, four hours per day, or maybe like six hours per day. That's a long day. Um, yeah. Sometimes it's like two. I've had even days where I was like hammered this out in like an hour because I like this type of copy, like emails. I can really kind of woo. And then um, if I know their industry really well, like business business coachy kind of people, I, I I write their emails really fast for some reason. So sometimes it's like you know anywhere between like maybe two hours per day and maybe like four hours per day. And if I'm really like I'm trying to hammer it out it'll be like you know six for the writing and then I'm trying to the rest of the types of hours which I'm handling handing over to my mom gradually it's usually like on admin stuff so I'm like okay I gotta like look at my emails and gotta make sure like I understand what's going on like kind of get right. my schedule intact and but she's gradually taking that over which is so nice she loves doing the stuff that I don't like to so do. good I wish I had my mom that like <laughs> My mom would have been like, no thanks. <laughs> I love you, but no. <laughs> um, but that's actually pretty much how my hours broke down. Like, I can't write for, like, four hours is, like, it, pretty much, like, it for writing. I would have some, like, six-hour days, but, like, that was a long day. That was, yeah. Yeah, writing <laughs> that long is, that is just tough. Um, okay, so where am I? Do you do a mixture of cold emailing or LinkedIn messaging? Like, how did you get your first clients? You kind of went over that. Did you did you do cold emailing? I have a really interesting approach when it comes to cold emailing. For me, cold emailing is more like getting an understanding of like, how do I take somebody who I do not know altogether, approach sure. them, start a conversation, and like get them to close and pay. Uh, so that's kind of like, what I was really going for to understand with cold emailing. I don't really do LinkedIn a ton because my clients are more like on the creative side and they have no idea how to use LinkedIn. It is so intimidating to them. So most of them hang out on like Instagram 
or Facebook. Uh, I love the in, uh, Instagram stuff um, a lot. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, that's really where I got my really big fish client. Uh, she was doing like, you know, um, Instagram live and just sharing a uh, YouTube too as well, because like I'll usually discover the client on YouTube because now a lot of my clients are like influencers and right. stuff too. Mm-hmm. Uh, they need they need great stuff you know they need like blog kind of stuff but they also they're launching like courses they're launching like uh product shops and stuff so like yeah so i'll like discover them on youtube and then i will follow them on like their other stuff which is usually like instagram and then i'll kind of like you know, start that relationship there. But I usually don't have to, I rarely have to do the LinkedIn. Mostly that is inbound for me. I've just kind of like set up a little thing and people are like, okay, all right, let me kind of go there. And I don't have to cold email. My my cold email is a little weird. (laughs) It's it's, it's, okay. It sounds like you've done the more like, so it's another, it's a whole nother beast to like join groups and interact and, um, kind of just make yourself known as a presence and it's definitely not as like cut and dry of a process and it can be it's it's because it's not it involves a lot of just like in like kind of like people skills and knowing like like what's too much and what's like not enough and when is it appropriate to close a sale and when is it not and how do you be helpful and like the other thing about it is you like really got to know your people to do that you know what I mean you can't just be like hey I noticed on your website like you're missing something like this, like you would in a cold email, like you got to like get to know your people and like hunt them. (laughs) Yeah. It's, it's, it's definitely a good technique, but yeah. So, so you're probably not sending very many cold emails. It sounds like. Hardly ever. I I call my cold email approach. I call it the sniper approach uh, because like I will literally pinpoint someone uh, very, very specifically. And I'm, I'm, usually it's people that like I'm already a customer of so that's why I love I love to cold email like those types of people because they're like more likely to be invested in someone who is invested in them and um, those types of people I get like really good response with and then they'll we get to kind of like start relationships in different ways so I will you know send like a super hyper personalized you know cold email to them and really just like talk about the different things I really enjoy about their product and how they're impacting me as a customer because that's very valuable feedback to them they want more people to become customers so I'll kind of sniper approach like that or if there's someone who's just like man you know what? I'm just dying to work with you that would be the type of person that right. called it's more yeah. of like a mindset for me of like ooh, I'm cold emailing like like kind of everywhere which is like okay how do I take this person who I don't know and like take it all the way to a paying paying client like that Yeah, for sure. And so after I built my initial client base, which it sounds like you did through your network mostly to get like that first income stream, I did that with cold emailing, but then I stopped cold emailing after I had like initial client base and then everything started coming in through like word of mouth and references and things like that. And I could basically stop cold emailing, but I would cold email like if I was at, I don't know, a conference and I was like, I want to work with that person. You know what I mean? Like I would hear them speak and I would be like, we're, we're working together and they don't know it yet. <laughs> and, yes. I, and I would like cold email them. And it was so amazing to me though, that it's still like a tool to have, to be able to like, like, you know, I know what to do when I want to reach someone who I, and if the other thing that's crazy is like over the years, what I've come to find is like, people are not that like hard to reach. Yeah. If you just like, <laughs> take the time to be really helpful and personable and show genuine interest and if you're reaching out to people you have genuine interest in which is the only people I think you should really you know what I mean at that level be reaching out to like it's really not that hard to reach some like pretty huge names like yeah and I love it I love it so yeah um there's one question that just came in on the can you see the chat questions I didn't know if you could see them but I got it for you but that's, All right. you got it. Did you, have, did you have a full-time job when you started the course? And if so, how long before you transitioned into full-time copywriting for yourself? And if you didn't have a full-time job when you started, what do you think was the most important thing when diving in full steam ahead into the course, aside from mindset? <laughs> because that's obviously the most important, but in order to get yourself propelled so quickly. <laughs> Yeah, that's an interesting question because I kind of had both. I've been in business for a while now. I'm coming up on like my five-year anniversary this 
year in November of just like being an entrepreneur. And at first, before I became a copywriter, I was a designer. I was like graphic designer, web designer. And so at that time, when I was building that side of my business, I did. I had a full time job, very full time. While I was working on average, like 12 hour days that could be easily become like 14 or 16 hour days. And so, yes, while I did start with mindset that trickled over to my action where, like I said, no excuses, no victim. I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, well, I have a full time job, so I can't because that's not that's not helping me do the business. And I'm not going to sit here and make the excuse that I have my full time job. So what I did was I just found time wherever I could. So that meant lunch break whenever I had sometimes it was just like I would only get like a 30 minute lunch break so I'd be on that lunch break building my business or um then I would just take like if I was able to like kind of like sneak I would get in trouble and work sometimes I'm like sneaking around like trying to like you know do my stuff but it just meant that like I had to just use like 10 minutes here five minutes there whenever I had when I got home I was very, very tired. Like I hear it. I know it. I understand it. I get it. But it's like, I would tell myself, isn't that all the reason why I have to make this business work? Because I come home feeling like this every day. Like how much longer am I willing to endure that? And that was like some, a little bit of juice to like get me going and be like, all right, job number two, let's go. And my mom was also a really big inspiration because she was working like two full-time jobs. Who am I going to complain? My mom was working 80 hours a week, two full-time jobs. She would get up at like two, three in the morning to go to one job, work a full day, then come home, change clothes at the speed of like superwoman and go to another job and not get home until like 11, 12 o'clock at night. Mind you, she has to get up at three o'clock in the morning. I'm like, I can't, I can't like sit here and like complain about like my little little 40 hour, 50 hour, 60 hour a week kind of like situation when she's working 80 hours a week. That's once again, that thing of like, okay, there are people who have it 10 times worse than me. They're making it work. What's my excuse? So I've combined that mindset with that action. And I would really just find time like wherever I would just like squeeze it. And then the days where I was off work, I'm working. (laughs) And so that meant that sure, I had to like sacrifice a little bit of things where I didn't hang out with friends as often. I wasn't Netflixing all the time. Like that was time that I was like spending building my business. And I also was not the biggest thing that really helped me y'all when it came to like finding time, but I had to cut out all that social media. You would be so surprised like how much time you will have if you're not like scrolling around on Facebook. So I have these apps <laughs> um, that like moderate that. I mean, not the first time I installed that app and it told me how long I was spending on Facebook. I was shocked. <laughs> like I was like terrified. So yeah, I have still, I was like, oh no, no, no. <laughs> this will not be how I'm living my life. Thank you very much. Yeah, exactly. So that you know, that's kind of how I made it work with a full time job. Then there was just like this threshold where I was like, okay, I'm like ready to make the jump. And that like little transition was just like, all right, do or die, like, let's go. And so it, I think it personally really helps to have some sort of understanding of how to create income in general, like you got to know how to like make money. So I was doing things like I would teach English online, I would like do other things to get myself kind of like a part time job so that when I left my full time job, I had something that I could use. So it's not you don't have that worry of like, oh, I'm going to be homeless or something, you know, or I'm going to lose everything. So I kind of would have that in the background. And I also had some some like some money saved up. And um, I had I just applied for a really great credit card um, with Discover, which gave me like an eight thousand dollar limit. So you know, like that also helped. And then I just dove in, like, okay, I've really got to know how to structure myself. And when you just dive in, you've got to have that self discipline. It's not like, oh, I just get to do whatever I want all day. I mean, you can get there, but it was like about me making sure that I'm very disciplined about what I'm doing to to build my business. So when I did make that jump into doing my business full time. It was just really about being very, uh, very serious, and very structured and very 
uh, adamant about who I'm talking to every day to to feel like, hey, like Grant Cardone always says, who's got my money? You know, who am I going to be talking to that, that I can really start a really awesome and amazing, like profitable, profitable relationship with. So just in the, to have the belief in yourself that you can actually go for it and actually do it, whatever you need to do to, to really build that up. It sounds so cheesy, but that you're going to be, you might be fighting against your own resistance of like, maybe I should just, you know, like give up. But if you can actually find some kind of way to keep refilling that within yourself, oh man, it, that, that really, really helps. I really think yeah. so. Yeah, no, for sure. I don't think I really talk about it. I actually don't think I talk about it almost at all in the group. But like when I was starting my copywriting stuff, I was working like basically a data entry job, but it was, and it was paying me way less than I could have made. But I knew I didn't want to work like a really good, like a, like job that I was qualified for. Cause I didn't want to like, I could kind of wanted to like be able to work a little bit on my business on the clock. <laughs> mm -hmm. but, like, I don't know. I just wanted it to be easy. And then also I was a server at night, which was crazy to like to go back into the service industry. And I, I was working so much. And then also in my writing business. And I remember I had some friends who were like, this isn't worth it. Like, what are you doing? You have no life. Like we don't see you anymore. Mm -hmm. And I just like would tell myself, I was like, I'm building freedom. Like I'm building, yeah. freedom. I'm building. It's why I call it right rear way to freedom. Cause it was like yes. my little mantra as I was like, I'm building freedom. I'm building freedom. And, and now, I mean, now I'm like, thank God I did that. I mean, you know, it was so worth it. It was worth the like painful year of like slogging through stuff. You know, it's so worth it to just, yeah. Yeah, that, that really resonates with me because I was really thinking about too, like, what do I have to put forth? Like, what, what do I have to pay to get this thing? Like in return, you know, if I want the freedom, the, the flexibility, the financial abundance, what am I going to give to be the recipient of that? And what do I need to have in line to, to make sure that that happens? And it's just, it's like when you can, when you can kind of like be able to see I, I guess they say the the when you can't see the forest for the trees or when you can kind of see like the light at the end of the tunnel and really keep your focus there it's like every single day it was like day by day brick by brick it was not just like oh I'm waking up and like here's like the money it was like ooh, how do I like really make this how do I make this work how do I keep myself going there were days where I was just like in tears like oh yeah crying. like I'm like I cannot do this I'm li I would work so much especially when I first left my job I was working like twice the amount, three times the amount, four times the amount of like time that I was working for like half the money. So it seemed, but I was like, I see, I see the light at the end of the tunnel. I know this, that this is like the way that I have to, because I can't, I don't want to be doing, you know, this, this other thing. So it just really, I, I know it's really hard to get past because, you know, you come, especially if you have a full-time job or you have like these other commitments, you come home, you're tired, you've got this other stuff, you've got the, the kids, you've got the people, you've got your friends who want to, you want to Netflix and you want to all this, but it's just like, what, what is really, really, really going to move the needle forward for you? What is really important right now and and that that kind of like shift it just it really helps bring things back into focus to have the right discipline to really take things forward I mean you'll 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 get all the things that that you want but sometimes there's just like a little something that you have to put forward so you can get it yeah and but the thing is that the thing about like copywriting is I mean it's hard to feel this when you're in it but like looking back I'm like it took like six months exactly <laughs> like really like to like completely trans like change careers and build a business and to be able to do it within a year in a way and like and have it thrive and not be working 40 hours a week like so many people go to college for four years go to grad school for another four and they're like working 50 hours a week making you know like it's just it's really it's it's the the payoff is so high and the potential is so high just just do it do the thing do the work put your head down for like six months three months whatever it takes and like I don't know it's just so good do the work I like that do the work you know yeah. do what's required yeah well it was is anybody else I'm gonna say does anybody else have questions we kind of have gone through all of them 
It's about an hour. Oh, it's exactly an hour. <laughs> nice. Nice. It's like we planned it. <laughs> oh, one more. Finding the time to do the website stuff is the main thorn in my side. The copy is what I'm interested in. So what type of questions, given your background, should I ask to a good designer so I can focus on the copy? Well, real quick, um, finding the time to do the website stuff is the main thorn in my side. I'm, the copy is what I'm interested in. So what, I don't know that if that to you sounds like they're also think that they need to do the website cop design, but anyway, okay. So what questions would you ask a good designer um, so that you can focus on the copy? You shouldn't have to though, is what I want to say real quick. You should only write the copy. You don't need to design a website. Copywriters are not expected to be designers or to do anything on the back end, really. They really are only expected to just like write the copy. But um, go ahead. I don't know if you want to add to that. Yeah. So I, I guess they're asking about like asking a web designer to be able to do like their own website or like websites for like other oh, people. Clarified. She said meaning on my own website. Oh, hmm. did I ask to get a good designer? I mean, ah, it's so hard not to have an opinion. I think she's asking, should she get a designer to make her website so she can focus on the copy? I mean, you could, but I also think it's really important to just know how to make a quick Squarespace website. Yeah. Yeah. I would completely agree. Squarespace is just like so out of the box. Like you can have a website like up and running like today, you know, if you're willing to just like, you know, really put forth that, that discipline, just get it. You're just going to say, Hey, I'm just going to take this one day. And like, that's the most important task I have to have. I can get that website going. Squarespace is so out of the box. So, I mean, you can literally pick one template. Like, let's just say you're really so focused on doing the copy. Go ahead and do all of that beforehand. Sarah lays it out in the course that you know what pages you need. You need the home page, the about page, the contact page, the portfolio, the services. So write that all out in like a Google Doc first. So, because I mean, this part, what I did, and I like designing websites, but I just, I didn't want to like spend all my time. I designed my website in like 30 minutes and had it like up and running. So have that, all that in a Google Doc and make it, format it, get it everywhere. And Sarah talks about the formatting, you know, like whatever your H1 is, like match it up match it up in the Google Doc, have your H1 be sex. You're going to have to do this for clients as well. Like if you ever do website copy for them and you hand it off to a designer, it needs to be in this good format. So you'll want to know like how to do it. So you get your H1, you're formatted it right. You get your body copy, you get it in the normal, you do your H2s, all of your pages are done. Then once you're really happy with the copy, you've spent the, you know, the time with it, go into Squarespace and just be like, I'm going to boom, boom, boom this. And you just pick a template, whatever. It doesn't need to be like, people are really not that concerned about it in terms of like copywriting. If your website is like jingle bells or whatever. So just pick a template, copy and paste your stuff in there. You might need to throw a couple pictures in there from Pexels or, you know, just, but, but you can really get it up and running so quickly to the point where you don't, you didn't have to spend like all that time fumbling with it. I find that like the, the issue, issue with the website copy and stuff where it feels like, oh, I'm really having a fight with the website is if the copy is not already done. And then yeah. you're trying to figure out where should I put this and I need to move this and I got to switch this block around. But if you already kind of have that done, you can, you can just plug and play and you'll be up and running like so, so fast. And Squarespace just makes it easy to do that. Yeah. And I just want to add to it. I am not somebody who liked doing websites. I cried a lot making my website and like almost destroyed my computer at least three times. So I feel your pain, but I'm telling you, it's really kind of only tough that first time. And then the best thing is, is like you can go in and update it anytime you want. So when you've got those stronger portfolio pieces, you just go in, plop them in. It's not a big deal. And then I swear to you when like a year from now, you're like, I want to start a business. You realize that you can do it in a weekend. Yeah. So just be like I'm going to just put up a website and start like telling people about it and boom, I've got a business overnight. Like I know how to do that. Like I just think it's such an important skill to have. And it's so important to be able to edit your own website. Again, what Shelly said about knowing how like formatting works, like that's so important to understand as a copywriter. And I just really, I just don't think it's worth it as you just don't need a complicated graph, like design, fully designed website. So anyway, um, Tabitha says, you both look beautiful tonight and thank you for spe speaking. I feel so inspired. Thank you, Tabitha. 
Thank you and so then much. I think, and then that's all of our questions. So thanks guys for joining. That was yeah. awesome, Shelly. You are seriously inspiring and it is so, so good to talk with you and hear from you. And please keep sharing your like journey with us. Like good, the good, the bad, the ugly. Like we want to know it all, man. It's so good. Absolutely. Absolutely. For, for my last point is like a little ugly tip. It was really interesting where um, I had to deal with this like really weird plagiarism situation where someone was like plagiarizing my stuff and I was like so frustrated. But because I knew how to just whip, it wasn't fancy, just put up, put up a blog post because I knew how to put this like page on my website, just add it to my website really quickly it only took 15 minutes i was able to then submit that link to the website where it was plagiarizing my stuff and i filled out a dmca uh, legal copyright thing and they took it right down i felt so happy but that was really because i had to actually kind of like know how to just whip something up really quickly and know how to protect my work and it happens but you know we we can we can know what to do and feel confident and protected with the with the skills that we have so you know thank you so much for really opening the door for like lots of different skills you know we're learning copywriting we're learning communication and people skills we're learning sales and marketing and closing along the way we're learning a little bit of web design and you know you, you've made this this freedom so possible so so thank you so much yeah that's that's crazy I didn't know you could even do that I'm like oh really every time <laughs> people plagiarizing me I've just emailed them and been like hey because usually the people who plagiarize me are newbie copywriters so I'm like I understand you're a newbie copywriter and you're probably struggling to come up with copy for your website but if you don't take down my copy Exactly. <laughs> I don't want to report you because I help copywriters, but stop copying me. <laughs> and usually the response is, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Oh, and I'm like, of course, like, I don't know. That's, <laughs> I didn't know you had like a, there's a formal thing you can do. That's awesome. Yeah. So, okay, I'll wrap it up with this. I just want to make sure you saw what people said. Uh, this, someone said, oh yes, this is exactly what I needed to hear. Focus, discipline, no more excuses. Setting boundaries with those around me is my weakness. So this helps a ton. Cool. This was awesome info. Thank you for the website stuff. I started to feel overwhelmed because I was trying to use WordPress instead of Squarespace. Good to know about the info for clients too. I appreciate, appreciate this all so much. Thank you both. This was so, so helpful and inspiring. Thank you. This has been a great night. Yay. Awesome. I love you guys. Thank you so much for being so awesome. And you know, we'll, we'll see each other again really soon too. Yeah, for sure. Thank you, Shelly. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. You too. Take care. See you soon. Bye. Bye-bye.